welcome to this webinar of the ICA, the International Crime Prevention through Environmental Design Association. The ICA is a professional, nonprofit, global organization for all things related to SEPTED. This webinar is one of many programs run by the ICA for preventing crime and creating safer places. My name is Matea Mihignac, and I'm executive director at the ICA. I invite you to take advantage of the many programs we offer by joining the ICA. I also invite you to stay with us until the end of this webinar, because we have a special anniversary gift for you. Also, a brief disclaimer that the views expressed in this presentation belong to our guest speakers and do not necessarily reflect the position of the ICA. The ICA does not assume legal responsibility for the speaker statement, the intellectual property, or the information presented today. Okay, let's begin with the webinar. I am excited to welcome all of you, our attendees and our guest speakers. We have with us Gregory Seville and Barry Davidson, co-founders of the ICA. We also have our media past president, Tony Lake, and our current president, Dr. Macarena Rao. We also have with us Tim Pesco and Paul Van Zumbren. They are regional directors from Europe who have been with the ICA since the very early days. Okay, so I will now hand it over to our president, Dr. Macarena Rao, who will moderate today's webinar to introduce the topic and also our speakers. So over to you, Macarena, have a good webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matea. Thank you for your introduction. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and we know that uh, our, attend, uh, our audience is in different time zones. So we appreciate very much that you are connected with us today. As Matea mentioned, my name is Dr. Macarena Rao Vargas and I am the president of the International Septet Association. Today, I am delighted to participate as moderator of an incredible Septet session with panelists that has contributed in the historical growth and expansion of SEPTED and ICA in the world since its foundation. This year, ICA celebrates its 25th anniversary and it is a relevant moment of expansion and consolidation of the ICA umbrella initiative all around the world. Something that I like most of the ICA is that we consider ourselves as a big family. And in that context, wisdom and experience is, is a key in the practice of SEPTED. That initiative, the Umbrella Initiative approved by the ICA board seeks to articulate in a friendly and organic way the different accepted practitioners group of the world. Today, we have relevant speakers and key actors of the history of ICA. I will start with the introductions. Welcome, Mr. Greg Saville from USA, ICA inaugural president and co-founder. He's a criminologist, urban planner, and former police officer. He's co-founder of ICA and chairperson of the ICA Course Accreditation Committee. Welcome, Mr. Barry Davidson from Canada, ICA co-founder, current treasurer. Barry is a ECCP Advanced Certified Septic Practitioner and Strategic Business Consultant that has worked around the globe solving real-time challenges. Dear Dr. Tim Pasco, welcome, ICA Director from United Kingdom. Dr. Tim Pasco has been a community safety researcher for over 25 years, carrying out qualitative and qualitative research and evaluation. Welcome Dr. Paul Van Sommeren, Regional ICA Director from Europe. Dr. Paul Van Sommeren studied social geography at the University of Amsterdam and urban and regional planning at the same university. And welcome Mr. Tony Lake from Australia. Tony Lake, is the immediate past president of the ICA board on which he served for almost 20 years. Tony retired as an inspector with the Queensland Police Service in 2007 after a career lasting 36 years. More information about the extensive biography of our panelists can be found in the links that Matea will post in the chat box. We will start with the first round of questions to each speaker then we will give the opportunity to the audience to interact posting questions in the chat box. And then we will continue with the second round of questions for our panelists. The main topic of the first round of questions is to talk about the changes in the septic concept over the 25 years of ICA. I remember 
I first read the Jane Jacobs book, Death and Life of Great American Cities, wrote in the early 60s, in 1996, when I was just an architect student at the University of Chile, and how that book impacted my professional life. I didn't realize in that moment how that book had impacted the great mission that four years later I started promoting accepted in the Hispanic region hand by hand with my ICA masters that I have today sitting as panelists and that lead me to be now the ICA president. In that sense, Greg, please explain us what was the status of accepted practice in the 90s at a time when Oscar Newman republished his Defensible Space article. Thank you, and, and um, I appreciate that very much, uh, um, uh, President, uh, my president of the ICA, and also to my esteemed colleagues here uh, on the board and uh, to the audience. Thank you very much for coming today. Uh, yeah, the, my experience with the whole business of SEPTED started in, in the late 70s when I was in, uh, doing my degree in urban geography and planning. I read Jane Jacobs' uh, Life and De or Death and Life and also in Oscar Newman's uh, Defensible Space. And I, you know, I joined the police uh, as a police officer in the late 70s and I was assigned to do SEPTED planning, SEPTED projects and development plans in 1984, 85. And so at that time, there was very little. I mean, there was one course in Louisville, one course in, run by the RCMP in Vancouver, uh, you know, smatterings here and there, people were just starting to do it, but they were basically using Oscar Newman's book. And there was no, this was before Design Against Crime, which came by Ron Clark and Pat Mayhew in the late 80s or in the 80s and it was it was uh, before routine activities, before broken windows, it was, it, was, it was a pipe dream, hadn't even been thought of yet. So basically it was basically this early idea that, that there was something called SEPTED. And I, and I, was, I started my master's work in the, in the mid eighties and I ran a conference in the late eighties on environmental criminology and crime prevention. And at that, I brought some of the people I thought were relevant to the field of geography of crime, environmental criminology and SEPTED. And we had Ron Clark and Pat Mayhew from the Home Office in the UK. We had Pat Branningham from Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. We had, uh, um, we had Mark Felsen who was at USC in, this, in the US at the time. We had Keith Harris, probably the foremost crime geographer of the day from Maryland. And we had about 30 prevention people and 30 practitioners and people from the community and police officers. And we talked about this. And, one of, and we published a book, um, Crime Problems, Community Solutions, as a result of that in the late 80s. And one of the things we concluded was this, this thing, the septed prevention thing was kind of like, it was kind of like the tentacles of an, uh, of an octopus. It was going in all different directions. There was nothing to bring it together. So it kind of felt something was needed. And when we started doing septed consulting in the early 90s, it was, it was a bit of a nightmare. So we reached out and, uh, and I found uh, my colleague uh, who's on the panel today, Barry Davidson, who was doing SEPTED as well in the early 90s. And a bunch of us were doing some SEPTED in the early 90s, but none of it was coming together. So between my, my business par uh, partner, Paul Wong and Barry and myself, we decided to run this conference in 1996 in Calgary. And that's kind of how it started. Oscar Newman had just published his book, uh, creating Defensible Space, his second book, actually third book, uh, Creating Defensible Space in 1996. It hadn't, we hadn't read it yet, but it was just kind of revisiting what had, had been stated in the 70s and 80s and had been becoming very academic and it was re being restated in the 90s. And I think the ICA was a time when we consolidated a lot of our ideas and, and, uh, and, and were concerned that, th that the movement was heading in different directions with different definitions and it didn't seem to hold together. So at the time, ICA made a lot of sense and it was a way to bring the, the, the concepts together. And that's how it started. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. So interesting your, your experience and testimony. Barry, and you were part of this uh, first moment of uh, creation of ICA. In your opinion, was SEPTED widely adopted after you created uh, the process? Well, I guess uh, I, would, I would be firstly challenged with saying uh, I'm not sure we knew what SEPTED was at the time. So were the strategies we were discussing and the ideas that were floating around being uh, accepted? Absolutely. Um, part of the challenge that has dogged us a little bit to even today is that we had, uh, we had influencers out there, uh, whether out of law enforcement, uh, planning, engineering, that were taking bits and pieces of the concept and running with those. And because they were higher profile, we had some challenges uh, recognizing the, the more holistic and broader scope of what SEPTED is or is meant to be. So I, I guess the easy answer is it was certainly accepted and adopted, but it was often accepted and adopted piecemeal and out of context, and often with uh, the bias of the uh, SEPTED practitioner at the time. So 
for example, uh, we, we had a, a law enforcement through North America certainly drove a lot of the awareness around SEPTED. But what uh, has been a learning for me over the many, many years is that it was an excellent starting point, but it was by nowhere near the entire picture. And so, you know, to answer your question, it really comes down to uh, recognizing, and it's what, when Greg and I first met, part of our frustration was, how do we pull this together to allow us to give people the tools they need and understand the scope and scale and context of what it is we're trying to accomplish with those tools. And uh, I think it, it was widely adopted, but I think it was often uh, perhaps misapplied. It certainly was not followed up well. Um, and uh, we learned a lot over the years. Yes, yes, I know, Barry, that uh, this was the first scope. And of course, it was challenging. It, I imagine it was super challenging to start the ICA on that moment and to try to make it easy for people to understand what was accepted. And in your experience, Tim, uh, how was your connection with this uh, early movement uh, from the United Kingdom? Um, do you think it was well, uh, the, it was overall the perception that accepted uh, was um, super positive for reducing urban crime? Uh, yes, it was uh, very positive back then. Uh... In the UK, it was really seen as a new practice and it was promoted by uh, the British Home Office, government researchers, uh, Greg's mentioned some of them, Ron Clark, Gloria Laycott, Paul Eplom, they've all become professors now. Uh, it was linked to problem-orientated policing and included physical and community consultation. But SEPTED was practical, and the main push certainly in the UK was when the uh, police took it on board. They were seen as the uh, main source of policing crime and prevention advice. We had traditional police officers trained in basic crime prevention, but they picked up on SEPTED and uh, they were trained as police specialists and they were called crime prevention design advisors at that point. And they gave the UK the biggest push by developing their own scheme called uh, Secured by Design, which was if a new or refurbished building took on board their police sector advice, they gave it a Secure by Design award. So it was a way of persuading developers and builders to take up the sector ideas, because um, unlike other areas, perhaps like the USA, for example, when you've got regulations and codes, we haven't got those, so we had to persuade our people to take them on board. I mean, it's the same kind of scheme that I believe uh, the Dutch uh, copied the later, so I'm sure uh, Paul will comment on that. Uh, we also, at this stage, were, saw that SEPTED was a really good practice, and we developed it into British standards, kite mark schemes, which then fed into European standards that a number of us have worked on since, and now we've got an international accepted standard. So from our, my perspective, uh, in the 90s, there was a lot of interest. We formed our own Design Act Crime Association in the UK, and uh, we linked up with the guys over in Canada, USA, when this conference was born. And from our perspective, I think accepted then was great. We were early pioneers, but internationally countries are almost in silos so the ICA was linking those uh, countries together reflecting each national needs their problems um, the classic septic quote context is everything would come in there so the ICA guys brought all of us together to start exchanging those ideas and best practices Yes, super interesting your view, Tim. And that's true. That's the main objective of ICA. It's uh, connecting, articulating those visions under a big umbrella. And Tony, you had an incredible career and you apply so much accepted in Australia. Please tell us, when was the moment when you connect with this movement, with this methodology, and especially with ICA? And also, uh, in your opinion, what is, the, what is the role ICA plays in the changes of the um, crime prevention scene, scene globally? I think, um, I don't know about globally, I can certainly speak uh, with Australia and New Zealand. And it began for me in the mid 90s. I, uh, through my colleague and, um, and certainly for many years, member of ICA, 
and the director, Rick Draper. And, uh, and Rick um, managed to get Tim Crow, who hasn't been mentioned yet, but he certainly wrote some good books as well, to Australia. And we all, I was in the crime prevention area of the Queensland Police at the time, and we listened to Tim and I thought, oh my God, this is great stuff. We need to do something about this. It, it was just a, a light bulb moment for me. Uh, but it took a few years for things to happen. And because of um, work by Tim, uh, by Rick Draper and John Goldsworthy and myself, we managed to get an ICA conference in Brisbane in 2001. And that took a fair amount of, um, of work, dragging it out of the USA and Canada. And, uh, but it, it worked very, very well. And, and it was because of that that uh, things started to happen here and in other words, the ICA itself, or the, the whole movement, was, I think, behind, was the impetus behind things happening in this part of the world. Because not long after that, a, a ministerial forum, that's government ministers, all the government ministers in the Australian states and New Zealand used to get together and talk about crime prevention. Uh, although the, I must admit the funny part about that was none of those ministers were ministers of police. So it, it was all, which I thought was okay because it meant that, you know, it's not just a police responsibility, it's crime prevention for the whole community. Anyway, they decided at one stage uh, in around 2004, uh, before our second conference in Brisbane, that uh, we should be focusing on SEPTED, just like that. So they wrote to all the ministers and um, in Australia and New Zealand and said, we think you should come up with SEPTED guidelines. Um, and it's exactly what did happen. And it was funny how in most places, like New Zealand were the first, they came out in 2005 and I was involved in that, which was great. Um, and then we had West Australia in 2006 and um, Victoria in 2010, Queensland 2007, and uh, also the Northern Territory in Australia in 2010. So it, it was the ICA, as, as far as I'm concerned, by having the conference in Brisbane, a lot of people attending it, well, as many as could, because we had a couple of issues at the time, um, like 9-11. And, and then all of a sudden, here we are. It's spread around the country, around Australasia, if you like. Um, because of that, we uh, formed um, an Asia-Pacific chapter of the ICA, um, which stayed around for a while, but then it was, it was simply uh, double dipping as far as we were concerned, um, fees-wise. So we just left it as ICA members after that. But uh, my job ended up being putting together the set 10 guidelines for Queensland and uh, with particular help from uh, Professor John Byrne, who some of you would have met. And um, it, it was, we ended up with a fantastic uh, document uh, that is actually still relevant today. So uh, that's, as far as I'm concerned, the ICA was really behind uh, getting things happening in this part of the world because of the conferences more than anything else. And um, we've sort of gone on from there ever since it's really good that's very good to hear tony i i also was twice in australia in your conferences and i appreciate them so much i learned much about the accepted context there interacting with different ica members board members and active members of ica so thank you for that and paul in your opinion what is the relevance of the development of the newer generations of SEPTED, uh, mainly in the context of the COVID crisis? Because uh, we are facing so many challenges, not only the crime problems that are raising in many regions of the world, but also the COVID uh, problems. So what do you think about that? Yeah, well, well, well first, back to, back to the history. I still remember that in the end of the 80s in, in uh, Northwestern European countries, we were talking about uh, uh, SEPTED, but we had our different names uh, uh, for it. And I, I still remember that people said, Sep SEPTED, is, is, is that septic? L like the tank of the same uh, uh, name, actually. So there was a lot of confusion about what is, what is uh, 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 SEPTED, but in most European countries, they were already working with uh, uh, these ideas of how to, to, to use urban planning design to prevent crime, because crime was a serious problem by that time in, uh, in, in Europe. I remember that um, uh, in, um, in, the, in the 90s, uh, SEPTED was 
was accepted in the northwestern part of uh, uh, Europe. And it's uh, later on, it's spread over Europe, going actually like a bit of a wave from the, the north northwestern part of Europe to the, the southeastern uh, uh, part of uh, Europe. And an interesting thing is that um, from country to country, you, you could see that uh, SEPTED became popular and then 10 years later, it disappeared uh, uh, more or less again. So um, it, is, it is important to have guidelines, uh, standards, law, that type of uh, stuff in place to, to, to somehow uh, structure SEPTED in, in, a, in a country. And that's what, what we learned. So it, it, it goes in, so to speak, in, in waves. Um, and that's what we learned in, uh, in Europe. Yes, that's true. And now we have the ISO SEPTED standard that is very uh, awesome that we appreciate much because it connects uh, with the standard. We connect different countries of the world also. And you have worked so much for that standard, Paul. So thank you for that. We are starting to receive the questions from our chat box. Here we have a question for you as panelists from Eileen Ibanez. Eileen asks, can you share with us how your country addressed the new COVID variant Delta and how the country minimized the impact? She's asking that and, and I don't know if anyone wants to, to answer that. The answer is no. Well, well I can, I'll <laughs> say something from Australia's perspective. It's, uh, we, we're doing very well in Australia, but we're going through another, um, I guess, um, well, another section or a session, I guess, of, of uh, COVID because of uh, the, the, uh, d the new variation. But the only problem that we, we seem to be having in Australia is, is um, hotel quarantine and the, um, and the fact that it, it's, it's so um, easy to get out and it's so easy to spread that uh, it's getting out of our quarantines. But we uh, have a traditional way of doing it in Australia and that's just lock down and lock down the states and it's, uh, we're actually a little bit over it, but that's the way it happens. New Zealand is the same. Uh, just lock down the country. We are a, a bit of an advantage in, the, in Australia and New Zealand because we're both islands, so we can keep people out, which is why, and, you know, I, I feel sorry for like Europe, for example, where it's very, very difficult to keep others out. But um, it is uh, it working and uh, we're currently on top, we're trying to get on top of uh, the latest outbreak here, which it isn't a bad one, but it's bad enough to close borders. And, and we're finding that closing borders between states as well as overseas is, uh, is having some effect. So uh, I don't think SEPTED really has anything to do with that, to be honest, but that's just uh, the way that we're handling things here and we're probably getting a bit off track, but that's what I think anyway. Thank you, thank you, Tony. Probably there is a connection or I have heard you, Paul, um, talk in some webinars that you studied some changes of crime uh, during the COVID crisis. Probably we can talk about that. Um, or do you know in your countries how, how that happens? For example, the increase of domestic violence, decrease of robbery. What have you seen there? Mm. Are you... You, 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 you can see that um, um, crime is, is often mainly an opportunistic uh, type of uh, behavior. So um, what, what, what we learned due to uh, Corona or the, or the COVID crisis, I think, and that's an important lesson, is that um, the old-fashioned old type of uh, uh, crimes more or less disappeared so burglary, um, violence in the public domain, it disappeared during the COVID uh, 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 times because the, the, there were no people on, on the street. So um, you, you can see that, that crime is very opportunistic. And if you turn that around, you, you, and, and that's actually what Septet is, is saying all, all the time, um, you you can say, well, if it is is most most 
of the crimes are opportunistic, you can you can change the the crime situation in a country by changing the opportunities by making um, either in the physical or the or the social domain um, make it more hard to to commit crimes, uh, for example. And well, the, the nowadays we have so much proof that um, crime can can be um, can be tackled or prevented by changing uh, the behavior of uh, people. And you can change the behavior of people by changing the, the physical environment and the, and the social environment of, uh, of, of people. So in that respect, I think um, over the years, if well, Greg, Greg started about uh, uh, 25, 25 years ago, actually, we, we learned that crime indeed is opportunistic and you can change, if, if you want it, the crime situation in a country or in a specific city or, or a neighborhood. But you, we, we definitely have to know that you, you don't need only security uh, approaches to that, not only the physical approach, but also the social uh, approach. And uh, well, people participating and they, they, they need to, to, to they want to change the situation. So that's important, I guess. Thank you, Paul. And Eileen Ibanez, say thank you for the answers. <laughs> thank you so much. So another question for Greg. Greg, has the structure and objective of the ICA changed since the 90s, in your opinion? And how? Uh, the structure of the ICA? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's changed a lot. I mean, we, we went through a, a regrowing re period in, in the 2000s. And, uh, you know, I think for me, um, the structure of the ICA has followed the uh, evolution of SEPTED in general. And I think, you know, SEPTED came out of this early history of community participation and building territorial areas and neighborhoods and defending space and that kind of thing with the, uh, with the work of Oscar Newman and the Westinghouse studies in the seventies, which looked at corridors and specific schools. And it was very, what they called uh, a proximal or approximate. That is, it's focused on a specific location. That's the power of SEPTED, what we call first generation SEPTED is it looks at specifics it gets it down, it says, not only what, what Paul described, which is where are the crime opportunities, but also what are the social motives that lead to those crime opportunities? Because you can have opportunities for crime and not have crime. It really depends on the social context. So I think we were doing that really fairly well early on, but I think what happened was it, it evolved. It evolved in the eighties and it became, it became geographical and became focused on target hardening. It became focused on you know, things like products, uh, fixing products and fixing shopping malls, which wasn't really the intention. Those are also valuable strategies and SEPTED has a lot to say about them, but that wasn't the original intention. So I think what SEPTED and the ICA happened was SEPTED practitioners got together in the ICA and said, let's talk about how we as an organization work to build com communities. How do we do participation? What are our community engagement strategies? I, don't, I think we're still working on that today. And when we, when we created a second generation accepted in, in, two, in 1997, we basically said, there are social strategies around, there's always been social strategies around, but they have no method. They have no method. And without a method, you don't have a strategy. SEPTED was not like that. SEPTED had methods. It had territorial reinforcement, access controls. It's very specific. Social, social programming didn't have that. I heard a, a government official say recently, oh, we've been doing social programming prevention for 30 years. Yeah, but you, you do literacy across the whole country. That's not what SEPTED does. So what second generation does, it does, does something different. It does not, not, not distal, that, that is generic prevention, but specific focus just like first generation septed. So I think the ICA, we, we introduced second gen at the ICA in 97. It's, and over the years, I think what's happened is we've become very sort of um, uh, professional in how we deliver uh, septed. I think we have now certification that focuses on these things and so forth. So I think the ICA has contributed a lot to the evolution of septed. Hope that answers your question, Naka. Yes, I think it, it answers, but I, I want also if it is possible, because people are asking in the chat box, if you can connect a little with an explanation of SEPTED's third generation, can you uh, give us a brief context about that? Yeah, I don't want to dominate the time because that's a whole nother field. But essentially, the early work uh, on C. Ray Jeffrey, who wrote one of the first books, the, the book actually that gave SEPTED his title, what he wrote in his book 
And I, I, you know, I shared an uh, office with CRA for many years. And he told me that his theory was to make criminology or to make the prevention of crime more holistic, to bring in many different disciplines. And, and his, his version of uh, his description of Oscar Newman was that that's not what was happening. It was about architecture and engineering and planning. So what he wanted to do is he wanted to bring different perspectives to make a neighborhood uh, high quality, to, uh, liv livable, what he called it. And so third generation is a return to our roots in SEPTED to say, you know, not, not livability or quality of life or diet across the whole community, but, but in specific neighborhoods that that plays a role in helping people enjoy their life and higher quality of life and wanting to be in the neighborhood and then wanting to get to know each other and then wanting to watch over each other in SEPTED. So third generation starting to go on that route. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you, thank you, Greg, super interesting. Here we have another question for Tony. It's a question from Paul Giovinali. Um, SEPTED in Australia, you mentioned almost every state in Australia except New South Wales has SEPTED. Can you please uh, elaborate on the uh, South Wales Police Force acceptance or lack of acceptance of SEPTED principles and maybe provide some insight as to why it may be that way and offer ideas of how this could be changed? This is your question, Tony, from ah. Paul Giovinali. <laughs> Now, I think Paul might have uh, misunderstood. I was only talking about SEPTED guidelines and I didn't mention New South Wales because they didn't put out a set of SEPTED guidelines. The reason they did that uh, was that they, in actual fact, were way ahead of the rest of, of Australia as far as SEPTED goes because New South Wales Police actually formed a Safer by Design unit and that unit uh, was uh, training people all over New South Wales involved in local government on, on SEPTED and uh, so much so that they actually gave a certificate and all sorts of things saying that uh, people who were involved or people who had done their four or five day course could actually get a certificate. So uh, I, when I was mentioning the fact that other states had put together SEPTED guidelines, New South Wales was actually a, a little bit ahead of the rest as far as training goes. So that sort of answers his question. Right, Tony, thank you for make the, the, the answer. Here we have another question in our chat box from Carlos Gutierrez. Carlos Gutierrez, ICA director. Carlos says, congratulations for the 25 years of the ICA. In these 25 years, could you tell us about two or three relevant moments of SEPTED and the ICA? Thank you all. Barry, can you answer that? Uh, that's gonna be difficult because there are so many. Um, I'm... Uh... <laughs> Well, and, and some infamous ones that we probably shouldn't talk about, right, Paul? Um, I guess I, I'm not going to, Carlos will be mad at me for not answering the question directly, but I'm going to say that there have been, over the 25, 26 years, there have been some conferences where we have always been blessed to have uh, amazing humans attending and engaging at the conferences. And Many of these people have been leaders. I mean, our first conference in Calgary, we had the Brantingham sat, and that that in my brain sort of set the tone that I don't believe we've ever ever had a conference that we weren't able as an organization to boast uh, proudly about the fact that in that room were some of the world's leaders in their fields. And so I think um, in very broad terms, what stands out in my mind is a few of these conferences where uh, many of these professionals and experts know each other, but they often don't have the opportunity to be in the same room and to be able to simply connect and chat. And uh, again, I, I, there are so many of them, I wouldn't pull them out individually. And I don't want to diminish the uh, intelligence around the table here and such, but I'm sure we can all agree we have been blessed to have some amazing people around the table that we could just sit there and, and I do remember Maca and Santiago being able to sit with, uh, uh, I think it was Ron and um, Paul Brantingham and several others and just sit and listen to the conversation. So those were some, uh, I can't help but believe that had an impact on further research and certainly further application of an understanding and a, and a vision of septed strategies and the concepts. So. In broad terms, I think it's that that bringing together of, of the minds. And if I yes, if right. I if I may of add course, something, yes. uh, Barry, Barry. So you have the ICA conferences, but don't forget that in in every continent we had follow up 
type of conferences. So I, I remember, for example, uh, the conference we had in Athens on the uh, the cost uh, action. So then you you have ICA people, um, well, talking about uh, uh, septet and bringing the word to 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 other people. So it is not only the ICA conferences. It is a kind of a spreading uh, all over different uh, continents, uh, probably. That's true. Thank you. Thank you, Paul and Barry. Um, to remember those moments is very relevant for ICA history. I have another question for you, Tim. We will start with the second round of questions. In the meantime, uh, more uh, uh, questions come to the chat box. But I have a question for you, Tim. You were invited to be a guest speaker in the Honduras conference in Tela. You remember, and my question is, uh, in your opinion, what is the um, what what is the positive aspect? Of, which are the positive aspect from developing countries connecting with the accepted methodology? I think that um, uh, it really the, almost reflects uh, how the ICAs developed. Uh, so in the 90s, we were keen and kind of eager pioneers testing and evidencing what we had done, learning from each other, building up that solid base and solid kind of methodology that could be used uh, anywhere, even though we recognize each situation is different, the tools can be used. And I think it's now in a position that we can now use those in developing countries. And the OICA is already doing that with some uh, far more uh, internationally. Uh, we've got India, Southeast Asia, or, or lots of other countries that are developing. What we've developed now, uh, originally, uh, despite what we claimed we were international, we were very uh, English spoken, uh, USA, uh, Canada, Australasia, and Northwest Europe. Now we've got Latin America on board. Um, we've got the Caribbean on board, and we mentioned that one of our, two of our directors now, Shamir, we've got uh, Dr. Manjari from India, so we have a huge amount to do. Uh, we have the training and certification that we can now offer these uh, third world countries and um, developing it to their own context. So we've moved significantly um, from uh, being, I don't know, young teenage septed practitioners to a far more serious organization with strategies and business plans and uh, we're trying to keep it relevant too so keeping it relevant to, is looking at what we can do for those um, third world countries for example we're doing training sessions uh, following Honduras and we have people for example from Nigeria and the issues in Nigeria is if it's so different to say the issues in London. So, but the methodologies and strategies that's so. Yes, yes, Paul, please. Thank yeah, you, Tim. So, so what that's interesting what, what Tim is saying. What what I learned from Honduras, but also from from uh, uh, Mexico, the last uh, Cancun uh, conference is the enormous um, importance of uh, violence. Uh, uh, so the, um, these conferences stress the importance of violence in these uh, uh, countries. So that that gave gave me and a, a lot of other people in in Europe anyway the idea. Okay, we have we we have to reconsider this issue of violence, and it it was not only the the, the content but also um, the example of. How well, Maka, you you work a lot with with school children, and how you develop that methodology of asking a, a ch a school children to draw literally draw their own uh, environment and explain what what, what the what the crime problems were over there. I I only only a, a few weeks ago I I used that example. In a manual for um, for, for for Europe to uh, to work on high impact uh, crime, so you also have to ask completely different groups of uh, uh, people. 
school children in 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 this uh, respect to to ask what what is your problem with uh, crime and what can you contribute to uh, uh, to crime prevention that's that's these are ideas i i learned uh, from from uh, from other continents and that's that's constantly happening in in this big uh, separate family so to speak so building on that it's uh... Well, what I also learned was that uh, the ICA has to stay relevant and keep our SEPTED methodology relevant and look at the risks of today. And we've already seen new risks. Uh, we uh, discussed COVID. We've got terrorism risks that are now very relevant, certainly in the UK. Um, we've got uh, transport risks. Uh, traditionally, we looked at buildings. Now we can apply SEPTED to transports and its impact on uh, certain members of the population that uh, feel more fear on transport. So again, we've got all the tools there, but the risks are changing and we have to keep uh, the ICA relevant to those uh, risks for the future. Very, very true, um, Paul and, and Tim, and thank you for that. And of course, for us in the Hispanic region, developing country, it is uh, very difficult to face the risky environment from some countries. Uh, Latin America is one or the most criminogenic region of the world. So we need to be super creative and to uh, look for other tools, for example, the cloud of the dream uh, methodology. But connecting with that, with the process of change, with the process of understanding the environmental risk, I remember that in the year 2000, ICA went to a rebuilding phase, Barry. Can you uh, tell us a, bit, a little about that rebuilding phase of ICA and how it was? There we go. Um, yeah, I guess I, I would actually look at it as more of an evolution, if you will. I mean, most of our, if I were to call it, uh, if I were to identify a rebuilding phase, I would say the last four or five years have been a rebuilding phase. I think through that first 15 to 20 years, um, we simply kept evolving to determine what we wanted to be. I mean, I think it's important to remember when, when Greg and Paul and I uh, put this little get together in Calgary together in 96, it was not put together to create an association. It was just put together to bring voices and brains together. And it literally came together before that two day or two and a half day conference was over. So there was um, a lot of uh, uh, planning on the fly through our first many years. And I guess if I were to be really looking at the positives and the strength of the people that came together is that we obviously had such a strong impact that the evolution of who and what we were was changing so quickly that, um, I mean, I guess there was certainly bumps along the way. We struggled to keep up with an organization that was entirely volunteer driven um, uh, and not really funded well. And yet we still managed to hit 42 countries and, it, uh, and several hundred members. So I think I, I would actually term probably the first 20 years of our, of our bumpy existence and growth uh, as being our evolution. And then the professionalization of the ICA has come in the last probably five to seven years, uh, where as Tim pointed out, and you've talked about MACA, where we're now actually working through strategic plans and we're now utilizing some of the excellent programs and initiatives that have been put together over those two decades um, and bringing them, expanding our reach into the world and, and making them more accessible to more people and more professionalized. Yes, I completely agree, Barry. And we work hand by hand uh, as executive uh, ICA committee. We know that we work very hard uh, moving forward the ICA strategic plan. And in that sense, Greg, I have another question connecting with the evolution of ICA. What does the ICA need to do remain relevant given the growth of antiseptic politics? This is a very sensitive uh, issue. Please, Greg, can you give us uh, light in that issue? Yeah, this has been something that started in the US, I think about a year or two ago. And I think it's spreading, it's already spread to Canada and some parts of Europe. And like SEPT had spread out of the US across the world, I think this can too, it's a meme and memes are very infectious. And this idea that SEPT can be used for evil, not for good 
that it can be used by groups to separate from other groups, take homeless people, put them over there, put some races and separate them, exclusionary practices, uh, what's called uh, you know, anti-architecture or, or hostile architecture. So this is a threat. I mean, the reason we created the ICA was to fight against this. The, the reason we have a code of ethics in the ICA is to fight against this. So what I think the ICA can do in the next five, 10, 15 years is, is first of all, I think we need to correct the fatal flaw in the definition of septet. There is a fatal flaw. I think there's a fatal flaw in what's been defined as septet in the terms of things like, like uh, 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 broken windows, for example, the, the, you know, by technology, by, by surveillance drones, by cameras. That was never what septet was intended to do. It was intended to build communities so folks can control opportunities for crime. So I think there is a tendency to go technical and to go technological to sol solve problems. And, and some of these theories that are about now, like the situational crime prevention that works on products, I think that's fine, but that's not what SEPTED is. The, uh, broken Windows, I talked to George Kelling years ago who created Broken Windows. He was mystified why it became, you know, uh, uh, you know anti-social uh, anti behavior training, which is not SEPTED at all. So I think the, the ICA needs to correct the fatal flaws in definition and make sure we put our label on that. I think we need to reclaim our heritage. Our heritage is, is a heritage of building neighbors, neighborhoods for neighbors and in reducing crime opportunities by doing that. And so I think we need to reclaim that. I think we need to educate and promote at every step of the way. I mean, we're doing some of this already, but I think we can expand it. I think one way we can expand it is by reinstituting the, the SEPTED journal, having actual academic research studies published. You know, I think we have the capacity to do that now like we couldn't. Some of the academic journals are out there doing some good work, but some of them are, are lost in statistics and they're really not relevant for preventing crime. So I think the ICA can do something, something there. Uh, so I think those are some of the things that, that um, that I think, by the way, I do think we need to reinstate annual conferences in the ICA. I know it takes a lot of time to put them together. I know we have regional conferences, but look, we have a lot to say. We have a lot of practitioners. We're worldwide now. I think really it's time to get back to the, our, our tradition of getting out to communities around the world. I mean, that's how SEPTED showed up in some of these countries. We showed up as a conference. Tony Lake described it earlier. That's how it got to Australia with some of the, some of the strategies that we brought as a group. So I think the ICA needs to reach out more to uh, different countries in different ways. Um, and so I think, I think that's where we need to go. We need to expand and, and, and not sh shirk away from these anti-SEPTED challenges, but to confront them and say, no, you're not, you haven't got this right. You haven't got this right. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're doing and explain to them through education. So anyway, that's my two bits. Very good answers, uh, Greg. Very good answers. I agree completely with the um, conference once a year. It's a very good idea. And also the SEPTED journal. You want to add something, Tim? Well, I, th I, I think uh, Paul, Paul. Um, what 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 Greg is is saying is is important. We we should look at the ethical uh, uh, side. I recently am, am, am working on a European project, and we have on board a few professors we, which are uh, very good in in ethics, as 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 they say, and and that that's an important issue. So. For example, the ethics of who owns public space and is it is it allowed to be is public space really public uh, space and that's important if we if we consider for example the COVID uh, 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 disaster at the moment. So in a lot of countries, um, the, uh, people are saying if you're not vaccinated, you're not allowed to to go somewhere. That's an ethical uh, uh, issue. And that has to do with, uh, um, with, with, with chapter two, I think. So who, 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 to who belongs the, the public space? Just w one issue. I remember, and I liked that, that article of um, uh, Paul Cozens, the dark side of uh, uh, septet. So we have to consider that, that dark side of, uh, uh, of, of SEPTED too. And we, we, sh we constantly have to discuss country for, for, uh, by country what, what we consider just and, and not uh, uh, just. So the, this whole ethical issue is an, is an important one to put on the agenda for the next, uh, the next few years, I would say. Mm. Yes, very interesting, Paul. And 
I want to connect because I have another question for you, Paul, <laughs> using your comments, adding to your comments. Uh, what do you think? And it's also connected with the ethical reflection, but it's very specific. It's from the audience. In your opinion, Paul, what is the role of women in Stepted and in the ICA leadership now? Yeah, I've, I've... I, I would say th this is this is another this is another issue. Um, I recently read a, a European research on um, what how how people feel in in the public uh, uh, domain, and what what was intriguing. I I thought was that um, a lot of people change their behavior in the public uh, uh, domain. Um, and that's mainly mainly uh, women, but also homosexuals, uh, lesbian, the LHTB uh, 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 people, because they they fear they fear other people, so they change their behavior, um, and they are afraid of sexual harassment, violence, that type of uh, 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 stuff. I would say this 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 is a very very important issue because we we are talking only looking at at women at half half of the world population and we, we this is something we we have to consider with uh, uh, a separate uh, uh, too it is it is not real crime um, it is of course there's also rape but it is it is harassment that type of that more verbal violence uh, uh, maybe and and due to that type of violence people change their behavior and then again you you can see that well we talk a lot about the public uh, domain the public uh, sphere the, the 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 public places but these places are not public for a lot of people in this in this case half half of the world population they're not public for for women because men uh, are are harassing uh, women uh, so that that's something that's that's really serious i guess yes completely agree and probably it's an interesting topic that we will develop uh, much more in the future webinars and initiatives of ICA. That is a trending topic that is very relevant. We have here a super interesting question from Ana Neves, Veronica Neves. Hi, Ana. Uh, hello to Portugal. Ana is part of the group that is starting a new chapter in Portugal. And he, he asked this question that I think it's for all. Where, how do you see ICA in the next 10 years? I mean, worldwide. And what are the main challenges for having a worldwide accepted association even more global? Who wants to respond? Greg, please. Yeah, well, I, I Paul, Paul, Paul Simran and I had a conversation about this a couple of years ago about can you bring accepted to any country in the world without question? I mean, every country in the world is very different. Some countries have a dictatorial regimes. Some countries are failed states. Some countries are corrupt. Some countries are run by criminal organizations. Some, some countries have dictators. And those, those types of people and places can manipulate. I mean, when Einstein and the early physicists developed you know, relativity theory, they had no idea it would turn into a nuclear bomb that would, that would add a bomb that would kill hundreds of thousands of people. An initial idea can go very wrong, put in the wrong place. So is that possible with SEPTED in some countries in the world? And I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, my personal view, Paul, I, I don't know if you remember this conversation, but my personal view is that you need at least a functioning government, you know, general levels of low corruption, you know, uh, a justice system and things like that. Um, but, but I don't know. Can SEPTED be applied across the world? I think that's one of the major challenges we face as the ICA in, in the next 10 years. So I'll leave it at that. Actually, Greg, I'm going to pile on a little bit. I, I think it's a great example of what we always train in around how, how context means everything. So honestly, can it be applied anywhere? I would say yes. It's going to be the how. And what 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 is the goal? What's the effect of this? On, but that's for another the, webinar. 
Yeah. On on the other hand, I would I would say we recently I remember we recently had a discussion about the ICA code of ethics, and and we mentioned that we and actually we added something like okay we we follow the the fundamental uh, 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 human rights laws. So that's 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 a kind of a that's the bottom line. So if there's not if, if there's not a working government, if there's not democracy, if there are no uh, fundamental rights, then, well, for, forget about uh, a separate and start working on that type of issues, I would, I would say. But that would mean, that, but, but if we accepted that, and I think you're right in some ways, Paul, but if we accepted that view, that means automatically SEPTED will not get into some countries. I mean, China is run by a communist government. They don't have democracy by, by any stretch of the imagination. And there are other countries around the world where they have dictators. They will never get the access to SEPTED. Is that what we want? I think <laughs> well, we should also focus the next 10 years on the practicalities, which is certification and training and enabling the practitioners to be ready before we even talk about the politics of the country, because if they haven't got people to do it, and they uh, won't be able to do. And we've got certification courses, we've got training programs. They've developed, it's now the time to get them out to these international countries, which it should be our next step. Antonia, do you want to add also? Tony, stay and save. <laughs> Tony, stay and save. I have one uh, question here. Ah, sorry, Tony. Go ahead. <laughs> I didn't pick up your question. Sorry, um, Maka. Yeah, I, I actually agree with um, with Tim there. I think we, we have to get these things uh, in place ourselves so that other people can use them. And I think if we do that first and get all the um, our um, training, our, our various certification, all that sort of thing in place first and then worry about the politics later. I think that's the way to go. And here is a question for you, Tony. Um, Mary, why from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, do the police in your country also work with partners? How do crime gangs relate thieves, homeless, manage in your country? Is the tourist site safe before the pandemic? Do the police have a plan for the third generation? Um, that's, I probably can't answer for the whole um, the country or New Zealand on that. But I think um, I will try to answer that generally. And that is that we have to um, remember that SEPTED on its own just it doesn't work. It, it has to work with all the others. We, we need to have strategies in place so that um, uh, our strategies, as far as SEPTED goes, do work in with everything else. And that is planning and, and uh, home uh, city building, uh, homelessness. It doesn't matter what you want to call it. We have to have strategies in place um, so that... Uh, these things can work together. And honestly, that's working pretty well in, um, in parts of the world, th these parts of the world, almost every um, council or large uh, local government area or cities, as you might call them where you are, um, does have um, SEPTED in their policy somewhere in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, I'm talking about the, ma the major ones, uh, not so much the smaller ones, but uh, a lot of them have come about because of the training that we've done in Australia and New Zealand, and they've thought, well, maybe we should have our own policies and guidelines. Uh, and a lot of places do require those. Where I am here in Brisbane, um, there's, uh, there are, I think, over 100 different policies actually mention um, SEPTED, which is wonderful. So that they, somebody does come to council with a development application, um, then they can say, well, yes, this is okay, but you need to comply with these. And I think while we have that, and we can work that in with the other strategies uh, that we need help with, uh, that people need help with, then it will work. And the things about violence against women and homelessness, all those things we've mentioned so far have to work in conjunction with SEPTED. We, we can't do it on our own. Very clear, Tony. Thank you for the response. And here we have a question from Elizabeth Miller, the ICA Secretary, Executive Secretary. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your question. And it is a question for all panelists. Elizabeth says, would the panelists please comment on what would be their top two or three actions or policies 
or directions that the organization or members could work towards that will really advance the ICA accepted principles and improve safety globally? Two or three actions, please. I'll just mention one, and uh, I mentioned it when I spoke to Macarena the other day, uh, and that is we, we need to do something about increasing membership. Um, I'm not quite sure what that would be, but uh, a membership drive would be the first part. The more people we can get involved, the more people who are able to access the uh, the ICA website and, uh, and various other things and various other ways of accessing other ICA members, uh, the better. So to me, the, the main thing we need to do, firstly, is increase our membership. Uh, that's my little bit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony. Completely agree. We need to have and we invite more active members all around the, the world. ICA is growing. The Umbrella Initiative is connecting so many septic practitioners. So please join us. Visit our web page. It's not so difficult to become an active member. So please uh, join us uh, now. <laughs> so and the yeah. others, Paul, <laughs> so please. Yeah, it is, I, I think the new um, umbrella initiative is, is very important. So what, what ICA is doing at the moment is making uh, uh, chapters all around the world. Um, and that might be um, a country or a region or whatever. So we, we for example, we, we have in Europe now a Swedish chapter, uh, the Netherlands uh, chapter, but also a regional chapter like the C Catalonian uh, chapter, which is Barcelona, part of part of Spain, Hungarian chapter. So it is it is important to form these these separate uh, uh, chapters, and um, then then we really have a, uh, an enormous amount of, of of people in a kind of a well, you might say um, umbrella, not. They, they might not be member of the ICA, but they are somehow connected to the ICA in these more national um, uh, uh, chapters. So that, that would be wonderful to, to have that worldwide. And that's happening at the moment. We have an Indian chapter. We have a lot of chapters in um, the United States. So that, that, that is growing and and that is uh, uh, an Im important structuring of the um, of the ICA and the, the ideas about uh, uh, SEPTED. And and furthermore, I, I would I, I would like to add, we have to think about also what is the definition of crime. And crime used to be a kind of an now there's nearly old-fashioned type of uh, uh, crime. So, uh, so the 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 uh, property crime, violent crime, but I'd like to stress the importance of cyber uh, uh, crime. So the whole crime situation is shifting in a lot of countries um, from ordinary, um, maybe old-fashioned crime, and that will still be important, no doubt, but also cyber crime. So. In the old days, your your home was burgled, but nowadays your bank account is uh, uh, burgled. And I think um, we can we can partly use the same separate principles for that separate uh, uh, that, that cyber type of uh, uh, crime. But that's something which is Im important uh, to well to elaborate the the next decades. I agree with Paul. I think it's making. Uh the ICA set it relevant to the new risks up and coming. It's also new work. And um, Greg mentioned earlier, bringing back the journal where we can actually uh, record that new work, new research. And that is where we could also have a push, which would not only get new members, but retain the members we've got because there's new things, new material for them to see. Yeah. And I think we're, I think we're, there's a whole whack of research and, in non-criminology areas that is more relevant and even more interesting in urban planning and social anthropology and areas like that, that we need to document. And I, and I think 10 years from now, what we should be doing in the ICA is, I, in fact, I think this should happen sooner than later, is we need to mount a, a promotional campaign. And we need to provide the regional chapters with, uh, with press kits or have them develop press kits with quotes 
and with sound bites for journalists who, who don't know what this is and need a quick, clear uh, answer for their media, you know, their medium that they're working in. And with the research and, and bibliography of research saying, you know, we're not just saying that, you know, social cohesion is a big part of, of, of prevention, but here's the research that shows how it works and why it works. And so I think we have a responsibility to, pr to mount some kind of a promotional campaign, not only to the media outlets, but also to educational outlets to say, this is what we're, this is the status of the field and uh, help our regional chapters reach out um, because we have to fight so much disinformation nowadays that I think uh, we, have a, we have a task ahead of us. Yes, very good ideas and action plans. So Elizabeth, I hope you take notes. <laughs> No, very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, panelists. Here we have another question that is very connected with some of the aspects that you mentioned about cybercrime, but it's, it's connected with technology. Percival, Percival from Brazil, Percival Barbosa. Hello, Percival. He's starting the Septet group in Brazil, and he asks, how does Septet look at the so-called smart cities with uh, embed technology? What do you think about that? Hmm. Is there a connection? I, I, I actually want to jump in with a caution. I think that I, I'm excited. I'm the biggest geek going and I love technology and I love how we can use uh, technology for analytics and, and such. But I think that we need to remember that um, for many of us, we uh, have some wounds having dealt with the, and we've heard it, almost everybody has brought up the fact that we're in a society where we want a quick fix, we want to uh, find some kind of fast technological or, or target hardening fix to just make it go away because actually engaging with humans is challenging. And uh, I, as much as I love uh, the smart cities and the, the overall concept, I worry that um, at the end of the day, a, a community is still they, the fabric of that community is based on the human interaction of the humans that, that engage and act within it. And uh, so I love the technology that's coming out. I love the toys and I love the information we can gather from that. But I worry that we keep getting uh, further away. And, and I'll say it out loud that lazy practitioners or in any field um, will look to a quick fix and utilize a piece of technology rather than staying at that holistic level and recognizing that that human engagement will be critical no matter what the tool. I fully agree with you, uh, Barry. Technology is something which always has to be used by human, by, by, by people. So you, you can never only uh, focus on technology, though I think you can use technology, but uh, it is still humans who have to to use it and they misuse it too. So yeah, technology, but you need a human factor uh, uh, too. Very, very interesting your answers, of course. And here we have another question that is super, um, super new, uh, a new approach. It's from Arvind Verma. Um, probably from uh, Arvind, I don't know if you are from India, I imagine that. He, Arvind asks, has Septet examined use of religious symbols, pictures of venerated leaders to control deviance, oh, sorry, to control deviance um, and civil behavior around buildings, public spaces? There is, I know lots of examples from India and other countries. Do you know, um, panelists, something about that? I can answer that if you, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, so Ar Arvind is from India originally. He's an old friend of mine from my graduate ah, years. He's a professor in the United States in criminology and is, is a very, very talented scholar. So uh, thank you for coming, Arvind. It's good to see you again. Uh, the, the answer is, I mean, some septet pr practitioners have been involved with doing septet in churches, but you're actually talking about the opposite, using the symbology of religion as a strategy, which is very unusual. And first generation septet, it's not, it's never written that way. It doesn't show up in any of the literature for the first few decades. But in second generation septet, there actually is one of the formal methods in second generation septet. It's method number three, and it's called a community culture. And that actually is exactly what that does in second generation septet is it taps into the perceptions and the resonance 
uh, attitudes, through safety audits, through uh, focus groups and surveys and so forth to find out what exactly is, is venerated in that community. And then that becomes something that the residents themselves choose as a way to uh, enhance their social cohesion among themselves. And so, yes, we do do that in second generation septet with principle number three. Uh, but it's, I, don't, I don't know of any examples in the first few decades where that was done. I mean, we've done septet in churches and religious places, but not the other way around. So uh, it's a fairly new area. And I think I actually think that's a future direction for septet uh, in our association. So and I'll leave it at that. And, and Greg, I'm just going to uh, jump in. I've been doing for the last three years, and certainly with COVID, things have heightened. Um, exactly that path with second gen septed and then expanding uh, within uh, faith-based sites with the inset teams, RCMP inset teams across Canada and helping to break down some of that target hardening and looking more to that culture within the faith um, and, and bring it around and, and very successfully. Like I, it has working well. And obviously every, as we preach out there, every project, every site, every group of people is unique. And so you don't just drop in there with a, with a checklist and do it, but it works very well. Yeah, and but but I think Arvin's saying the other way around. He's saying that you actually don't do anything for them or to them. You you actually have very little role there. All you do is you teach them steps, and they develop it themselves based on their culture. I think that's the angle he's getting at. Yeah, no, no, and and I'm supporting that because what what it was unique and challenging for myself, just a bit of a, a sidebar, is that I had to convince our law enforcement uh, partners that they weren't stepping in in these faith based sites to fix it. <clears throat> and exactly what you're saying, Greg, and what Arvin's saying, that that it, we're there to support them, and they need to be driving that. It, right. It's about empowering and mentoring and not telling them how to do it, but teaching them how to come to the conclusions. Yeah. Just to reinforce that, um, some of the uh, graffiti research we did in some of the gang areas across the world, the religious murals were very often left... Uh, uh, untagged uh, despite all the other bits of graffiti happening so reflecting that uh, the the uh, importance to that community despite uh, where they're coming from mm. here we have another very interesting question that comes from adrian garcia from canada uh, and with a comment he says Hello, everyone. It is nice to listen about all of your experience and to have you in one place at the same time. <laughs> I think the same. My question is about how much during the last 25 years the septet reports recommendation have changed while consulting municipalities around your regions. I have been practicing septet for the last 12 years and my reports have been getting more elaborate with more options when making recommendations and technology has been more utilized to mitigate the current challenges. Did homelessness, use, and addiction-related crime was included in your reports? Who wants to answer that? I, uh, I'm going to jump in, Greg, on this one. I would actually, um, I would answer that with a very clear statement that if those types of areas and issues aren't included, it's not an appropriate report. And the only other thing I would come to is be very cautious what you're doing around recommendations and I know it's just wording and, and it's a question but um, I, I have uh, and the people I've worked with and some of the very smart people around this table have recognized that the strength that we bring to the table is that we've seen a lot of different things but we don't have the answers so I'm always very cautious and in fact we've changed our, ver our verbiage in, in our um, when we do our written reports that we don't have recommendations uh, that come directly from us in most cases, unless it's a commercial type of, uh, of property or project. We actually bring forth the group that has been engaged and brought together in that space, especially at a community level, and make sure that that those recommendations and such are not coming from an individual and they're coming from the community or the group or the staff group even. I mean, we've, I've had corporate environments where we've had the staff be penning the report. We do the work, we'll do the footwork and work with them, but it's coming from them. Thank you, thank you, Barry, for your response. We are running out of time, unfortunately, so we have just some minutes to ask each panelist to highlight one main idea, please. Greg, can you start with your highlight reflection? So I have to go first. <laughs> 
<laughs> that makes it th- I'm, <laughs> everybody can build up i have to figure it out um well look i i just repeat what i said earlier which is i think we need to reclaim uh the history of our movement and we need to uh dispel some of the misinformation that's been going on through promotional campaigns i think we have a powerful role to help the uh, research uh, I think we have to reclaim the research, by the way. I think the research has gone a bit off the rails with different groups. And I think it's not relevant to prevention. It's not relevant to real life. If it's not based on action, then it's not helping us. And I think, I think we can reclaim the research agenda in organization to help move that forward. I think that's, I also think the discussion about uh, ethics uh, is a, an important one. And finally, I think uh, like the last question, questioner asked about reports and stuff. Look, we, we spent a lot of time creating the International Stepid Associations uh, Certification Program and the Course Accreditation Program. Uh, all the competencies within that program that you must satisfy, they cover all those things off. So I think the more we can do to get more people certified um, uh, here and abroad, I think is, is better for everybody. So that's my, that's my uh, con- uh, comments. Thank you, Greg. And sorry, can, can you explain a little more further the um, certification program? Because someone is asking about that. Certification. So it started about 15 years ago under Josh Brown, one of our former directors. It's currently run uh, by Matei Mignac, who's behind the scenes here somewhere. And, um, and then there's a course accreditation program, which I, I head up. And basically what we did was we said, what do practitioners need to know in, to be a competent uh, septed practitioner? And we spent a couple of years doing the research and we came up with what's called 11 core competencies, everything from knowing the basics to being able to work in a team, to do the research, to write a report and so forth. And so uh, you apply to the program and uh, if you satisfy eight of those 11, you get the practitioner basic level. And if you get all 11, you become professionally certified and you can also get your course accredited as well. So uh, it's on that, all that's on the, the, uh, on the website, the ICA website. Thank you, thank you, Greg. And also Matea, our executive director, Matea Mihinjak uh, is uh, posting all the links of the certification program uh, here in the chat, so please, you can see more information in the links. So thank you for that, Craig. And in your opinion, Paul, do you want to highlight uh, one very main idea? I, I, I would say I have three, three words. Ethics, um, that was already mentioned by uh, uh, Greg. That's an important issue to elaborate uh, the, the years to come. Cyber, I already mentioned that. Crime is changing um, to the to the cyber domain, which is uh, as as real as as all domains, but it is a different uh, uh, type of uh, uh, crime. And the last thing, of course, well, I'm always talking about standards, and I mentioned earlier that what what you can see in in what I have seen in several countries is that septet, what name they use uh, uh, for it. Is very popular at a certain moment. And then after, say, 10 to, to 20 years, it disappears again. And then it comes up again after uh, 10 years uh, later. So it, it, the focus changes from oppor- opportunity type of approaches of uh, crime to offender. And often it is the more right-wing type of government who are focusing on offender uh, uh, type of uh, uh, approaches and separate is, is more focusing on opportunity. So it is important somehow to, to, to make laws, to make guidelines, to make standards, that type of uh, uh, stuff, which are in the, in the regular justice type of domain. Um, and that's a, a kind of a foundation in, in, in the years that, that septet is less, less popular. And I'm always, um, well, Tim, t- Tim and I worked a lot on, on the European uh, standard and the, that European standard also helped to promote septet to other countries, but it also helped to have a kind of a bottom in, in other countries um, to prevent uh, uh, septet from disappearing so so to speak and we're still working on on standards and in that respect i think the iso standard the worldwide uh, standard is important too it is still long from perfect we should we should keep on working on it but it is something well it is it is a foundation uh, i would say so 
standardization is extremely important. Yeah, I completely agree, Paul. Thank you. And in your opinion, Tim, do you want to highlight one main idea? I want to highlight first what a, a privilege and how I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed the journey so far. And I want to continue that journey with you guys and all the new people. Uh, a bit like Paul, I've got three words, really. One is um, uh, I think we need to, um, as a number of people, particularly Greg said, reclaim the research area and new research. Uh, we have to maintain and promote our training and particularly uh, we need to develop and I'd like to see us going further into uh, the poorer, maybe in an inappropriate term, but the third world countries to uh, promote the ICA. And your, your idea, Tony. Thank you, Tim. Um, I, um, uh, unlike my uh, esteemed colleagues, can't count the three, so I've only got two. And, uh, and that would be um, membership and certification. So I'll just keep on the practical side of things. I mean, we have, uh, in, even in Australia, it, this uh, SEPTED is called lots of different things. And, and I think we need to keep that in mind. It, it, we, we have a safer by design, New South Wales. Victoria just calls it safer design. Western Australia calls it designing out crime. And um, the Northern Territory just have safe uh, community design. And so we, we have all these things. Uh, but the most important thing is that they're all very, very similar or actually very much the same. So the two things for me are, Membership, let's, let's uh, everybody who's listening in here, if you're not a, a, an ICA member, please join. Matea has put up the, um, the link for you and she's also put up the link on certification. So once we have those two things up and running and, uh, and, for, and get out there and, and as, um, as Paul and Tim have said and promote the ISO because that's what it's there for. It, it now sort of unites us around the world and uh, it's something we can say if somebody says, well, where do you get this from? You say, ha, check out this document. This is an ISO. So this is the way we can actually do it. So they're, they're my couple of comments. Thank you. Thank you. Barry, some final ideas do, for closing? All right. Everybody should cringe, uh, Greg. She gave me the mic last. Um, <laughs> I, I'm actually not going to count to three because I want to try to uh, encapsulate because I agree with everything I've heard. And I, I guess I've got two thoughts that I'd like to leave everyone with. The first is one of the things we've heard today is how powerful it has been bringing people together. And it was not a clear selection process. We didn't pick and choose. What we've done is we've created a SEPTED family of people that care about the world around them. A million different backgrounds, a million different professions, and uh, different expertise levels. And look at what we've accomplished. And we've heard today how much impact we've had on countries around the world and communities around the world. And that doesn't stop. That doesn't stop at all. So I guess my, my other side, and for those of you that know me, I know I can be a bit of a political activist as well, certainly a social activist, is that we now have 25, 26 years of credibility. And I so support the idea of taking our research back. Um, when we used to complain and in the early days that we didn't have anything to prove what we were doing works. We're well past that. We're now in a position where it's up to us to quit waiting for somebody else to do it, take that research back, but also turn that around and apply it to those countries that uh, may, not be, um, uh, <laughs> may not be the best place in the world to be working in with a collaborative uh, um, uh, process and to perhaps help areas in the world that need help even more than our North American and our big Western cities and such, and see how we actually have, can have a positive impact on the world with the things we know. Because saying it's going to be hard, first and foremost, is the worst excuse in the world. And secondly, I don't think any of us have ever signed on anything that was easy. So I think uh, if you're a good SEPTED practitioner, then you're there to make your space, whether that's a one block area, a park, or an entire community or a city, you obviously have somewhere inside you a fire that burns to make that a better space. And I think that we have grown to a point and evolved and become professional enough with all of the hard work from the people around here that 
we're now a force to be reckoned with and we just need to rally our troops and start deciding where we're going to be that voice. And as Greg pointed out, and I know it, it I, I flinch, it feels like a personal attack when we hear about hostile septed and, and crap like that, because it just speaks to that lack of education, lack of understanding or a bias and an agenda, either side of that spectrum. And I think we're in a really good position and I think we're strong enough and credible enough that um, in, in very broad terms, it's time for us to stand up and, uh, and be heard out there and not allow when we have uh, the ability to do it, not allow for some of these, uh, this misinformation to be published uh, unchallenged. Thank you, Barry. Excellent. Your closing remarks. And thank you all, uh, dear panelists. You did an incredible work uh, with so many talent ideas, so many interesting actions to move forward for ICA and the SEPTED movement globally. So I want to start the closing process of the webinar, highlighting and some resume of the main <clears throat> ideas. So some very relevant ideas that I want to highlight are Accepted is an alive methodology that evolves hand by hand with the society. ICA is the leading global organization of the accepted movement and with the umbrella initiative invites accepted practitioners and other accepted organizations to coordinate themselves and make synergy that is so needed globally to achieve urban security in a very disrupting uh, world. Thank you so much, dear panelists for your big contribution to the session and the septed history and the septed movement and the ICA. And now I will hand over to you, Mateja, for the closing of the webinar. Thank you very much, Macarena. And uh, also many thanks from my side. Uh, thank you so much for taking us down the memory lane. Memory. Um, it was very exciting also to see how to move forward. Okay, so um, as I promised at the beginning, I would like to um, give you this gift. Uh, so all members um, are welcome, or existing members and members yet to be, become members of the ICA are welcome to send us a sentence or two um, explaining why they would like to become a member of the ICA or why they would like to remain a member. So uh, we offer a one year free membership uh, to 10 of you. Um, so the deadline to submit your email with uh, this sentence or two is Monday, uh, end of Monday, uh, this coming Monday, 26th of July. So please email us. Um, so 10 of you will receive this gift. Um, thank you. So um, I would also like to remind everyone about uh, the upcoming conference. So the conference will be hosted virtually from Sweden in November, beginning of November this year. Uh, but uh, also the call for abstract is uh, abstracts is open. Uh, the deadline to submit your abstracts is Tuesday, the 10th of August. So uh, please make sure you find more information on our website um, and see how you can submit the abstract. Um, and we're looking forward to receiving the abstract. So thank you for that. And lastly, I would also like to invite you to complete the survey. You will receive an automatically generated certificate of attendance as well. If you complete this survey, um, I provided a link in the chat. You also have a link in QR code here that you can follow. So I would like to thank you all of you again. Uh, we will end with a short um, promo video. So thank you everyone, stay safe. Thank you again to our panelists. Uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>